What's going on YouTube? This is Sean. I am back again and in this video we are going to be working on Spider-Man 2099. Well, at least the helmet because uh, why not? I mean the future is here. But before we get started, I want to thank the folks over at New Air for sending me over this portable heater. It's so quiet sometimes I forget it's even on when I'm working. Unlike some space heaters, they only have high and low. This one you can actually control the temperature. I have it next to me whenever the varnish requires a certain temperature to cure. I've used it next to my 3D printer when the air is really frigid. And most importantly, it helps accelerate the drying process because you know how much I love watching paint dry. What I really like about this ceramic heater is that whenever it's on, it's not blowing hot air at me. And I can feel the heat. It's just not blowing it at me and that's a big plus. It also tells you what room temperature it is and it has this really nifty remote. I mean, if that's what you're really into. I mean, if it's really what you're into, then uh, check the links in the description below and use promo code 20 cn for that 20% hookup because, you know, we all like hookups and stuff. Enough about that, let's get into Spider-Man 2099 because you guys have been waiting way too long for another helmet foam build. So I got my templates all laid out, traced out, and cut out. And I'm going to save this little eyepiece right here for the mesh that's going to go around the eyes. And I'm going to carefully cut and trace out the patterns on some 5mm EVA craft foam. I did cut this eye accent piece in a slight bevel to give it a nicer clean look. But that's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I'm using this copper-ish paint sharpie paint marker or whatever. And it sort of works sometimes, kind of, but not all the time. I mean, you got to go real careful with it and let the ink flow. And now that I got the side pieces for my helmet cut out, it's time to take those inner patterns and transfer over those patterns so that way I know where to stick the eye accent pieces so that way it can stay symmetrical because we all know how I feel about having crooked facial features. Then I'm going to take the patterns for the eye accent piece and then I'm going to transfer over the rest of the pattern because why not? Then I'm going to go in and apply contact cement to the edge of the uh, pieces. I'm using barge contact cement and if you don't know how to use it, well, uh, you gotta wait for it to dry completely before you can stick it together because that's how it works. Some people are like, hey, my contact cement isn't sticking as instant as yours. Well, mine doesn't stick instantly either. I have to wait like five minutes or so for it to dry and then stick just like that. First, I'm going to attach the top piece to the side piece, and then I'm going to connect the nose bridges. And I'm make sure this ear piece is closed. And I'm going to repeat the process over again for the other side. Because, duh. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to connect the two larger pieces together down the center. And notice I'm using a waxy type paper to keep the foam from sticking to the table. And uh, it also helps me get the, the edges or the joints nice and smooth. So that way I don't have to go back and do any sanding. I mean, you could, but I mean, the sanding also leaves... Uh, impressions too I mean you can still see it after paint so it's better to try to get your seams nice and clean as possible and uh, and skip the whole sanding process but I know some of you guys are like I, I gotta sand it I, I just it's just gotta look nice and you can also fill it with caulking too I mean that's just a another step that I tried to avoid doing and now I'm gluing on the lower front chin area this also help keeps the helmet from looking all uh, I don't know fat it keeps it it gives it a better form and shape But it will require a little bit of trimming once you get it all together and test fit it on your face now I'm gonna go in and apply some barge contact cement with a Scrap EVA foam so I can get it all nice and flat and smooth on there and notice I'm not doing a really good job in coloring in within the line, but uh just cosplay bro I mean just 
keeping it real, you know what I'm saying? And now that I'm done with the helmet, it's time to go in and apply contact cement to the accent areas. And you don't really need a whole lot, you just need a thin coat just to keep it together. And now that my contact cement is dry to attack, it's time to carefully align the eyepiece accented pieces to the rest of the helmet. And uh, I normally use a heat gun to soften up the craft foam before I attach it to the helmet. But, I mean, the heat gun was so far away from me. I mean, it was literally like a foot away. And I just had to plug in the heat gun and turn it on. But that just seemed like too much work at the moment. So... Um, yeah, I just went ahead and just put it on just like that. And, you know, after staring at it for a little bit, I'm thinking, you know, I could probably went with three millimeter thickness. I mean, five was probably a little too thick, but it looked cool and I, mean, I already had it glued down. So I'm going to try not to think about it so much. So far, so groovy and Spider-Man 2099 is starting to look really legit. I mean... I mean, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Now that most of the helmet is done, it's time to go and plug in the heat gun and do some heat forming and also close up some of these pores on these foam because, yeah, this will just soak up paint and, and Mod Podge if you're, you know, if you were just to leave it unheat sealed. But before I go and seal the foam, I'm going to use some of this E6000 to glue on this fabric to the eyepiece. Now, I've never really used E6000. E6, this is actually the first time I've ever used it. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of new to me. So I'm gonna start off by taking that pattern and, and cut this uh, clear, it's not clear, it's fabric that you can actually see through. And if you're wondering what kind of fabric that is, I honestly don't know. I just know that it's stretch, stretchy and you can see through it. And I think any fabric that you can see through will work for this application. So I went and applied the uh, E6000 on there and carefully pressed in the fabric. And it seemed to hold pretty well, uh, except for the other side. I kind of messed up. I think I went and applied the uh, E6000 directly on there. And without scraping it smooth, I went and put on the fabric and I used this high-tech tongue depressing stick thing and it left this funky, uh, I don't know, it, it kind of left a funky funk there and wasn't as pleasing to look at as the other side is. But, learn from my mistake and don't do this, do this, right there, yeah. Now as for the back of the helmet, I'm using another black material. This one you can't see through, but it's real stretchy and it's a little bit thicker. I'm using the E6000 to glue or do the, to hem the edges because uh, I didn't feel like breaking out the sewing machine. And some of you guys are asking if it's okay to glue fabric together. And I've seen people do it. And I know this E6000 has stretch properties that barge contact cement doesn't have so I think if you were to do like hemming and stuff like that and you didn't want to use a sewing machine then the E6000 is the way to go but as for gluing it directly to the uh, foam I'm going to use barge contact cement because I want it to stick instantly whenever it dries so yeah I'm just gonna stick to something that I'm a little more comfortable with and I know it works. Notice I put the glue on the inside and the edge. That way when I stick the fabric on there, I can glue the fabric directly to the edge as well as the inside. It gives it a cleaner look. And it does overlap the chin piece just a little bit. But I'm carefully like stretching the material. But not too much because I don't want to have a lot of extra material whenever I get down to the chin area. Now the purpose of this is that it will make the helmet look a lot nicer. It'll cover the back of your head a little bit better and it's also stretchy so that way you can um, put it on and off easier than if I was to use like you know foam in the back there like I did on some of my helmets. This is just a lot easier to put on and off. Now painting wise not as easy but 
It looks good. I mean, if you go with black. I think black goes with any color. Now it's time to seal the foam. I'm using Mod Podge to seal the foam because it's non-toxic. And I don't want to be out in the shop where it's really cold. And, and uh, I don't want to use Plasti Dip inside my studio because it's very toxic. And I have that little heater in the background so it helps accelerate the drying process now I originally started off by paint brushing the uh, blue on there and I was getting these brush strokes so I decided to break out the airbrush and just shoot a few coats of uh, blue on there and this is the final result and it's looking really legit and if you're into this, I mean, if you're really into this, then check the links in the description down below. It will take you to the templates and uh, you can start your own Spidey 2099 because he's awesome, I think. Y'all let me know what y'all think. So leave a like and uh, comment in the comment section below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.